Hey guys, it's Jason Collins. You're watching Chasing Homes and we are back at Seiko 22 in Stone Mountain, Georgia. What you see behind me here, guys, this is a 12 wide by Legacy Homes. Legacy's putting out some great products. We've already done a couple of videos on some of their other homes that we've seen here at the show. I'll drop some links down in the description below. So if you guys want to check those out, drop a link. You guys can check them out online. But here's the thing. We have got John. John is a great rep for Legacy. He's going to give us the complete ins and outs of this one. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, let's pop in and take a look at this one. 12 wide by Legacy Homes. Hey, we got John here. Guys, John is the information guru when it comes to Legacy Homes. John, what have we got here? Jason, what we have is a 12 by 52 foot box. It's a two bed, one bath. This is one that fits in just about any space that you can find. If you have strict setbacks or any type of municipal restrictions, this is the house that's gonna go there. It's also great for 55 plus communities because it's a little bit smaller square footage. You still get good sized bedrooms. Here you've got an open living room, a galley kitchen that's still got all the legacy features, vinyl wrap cabinets, vacuum sealed, three quarter inch hinges. We've got an integrated backsplash on a high definition bulldoze countertop. Cabinets that are finished out. We haven't talked about this as much, but what I've noticed is that a lot of the times it's a lot cheaper, lower cost, just to do do a, either OSB or you can leave it completely exposed. Here, what, what these are is built just like a home. As I said, we're 11 feet wall to wall. So if we come down here to where the hitch in bedroom is, we've got our bathroom. We've got 24 inches here for a stackable washer and dryer. A lot of times on the shorter, smaller boxes that are lower square footage. That's one of those that it's hard to find space to get them. But whenever you're at the maximum legal width, you're able to create that. Just that additional four, six to eight inches can make all the difference in the world. Here we've got a full size bed. There's still enough space to comfortably walk, have a dresser, put a TV mounted on the wall if you want to. You can have a nightstand. All the outlets are still accessible. We've got the window slightly off center so that it's never gonna be covered up by any furniture. We've got drapes blinds, we'll trim on all the doors. If we come in here, one thing I didn't point out in, in some of the bathrooms, is actually we do a standard European style wand, which is gives it a little bit higher pressure while using less water. One of the big pushes that we've been working on is, is to be more energy efficient. So this actually has a radiant barrier in the roof decking. We've got a mini split AC system. This one has a sear rating of 21 on it. Uh, there's actually floor and ceiling insulation. You've still got a toilet paper holder, towel rack, in every single bathroom. So, so, so a lot of the same features that you see in some of your higher end homes, you guys are carrying those over into some of these lower price point homes. And I think that's really important because, you know, just because somebody's looking for a smaller home or maybe they've got a budget that they're trying to stay within, I don't think those people should have to sort of scrimp on some of the well, I mean, the essentials, I guess, is really what we're talking about. Absolutely. Uh, when someone's going and buying a home, it should be a home. It should be turnkey. It should have something like a floor-mounted doorstop so that at no point, even if they're not thinking about it, they never have to worry about the door putting a hole in the wall or putting something that's sticky behind it to try and protect it. How many of you single wides have we seen that had doorknob holes in the wall? <laughs> Quite a few. You know, if you've ever had a refurbished scene when they come back, where you're replacing countertops, you're replacing light fixtures, but you're, you're patching up holes all over the place. But you know, some of the things that you had pointed out is it really goes to, um, to resale value. You know, one of the questions that people always have is, is an investment in a manufactured home going to be something that I'm gonna be able to get a return on? Am I gonna see any sort of appreciation on this? And little things like that, people don't necessarily think about, hey, if you don't have holes knocked in the wall, that's gonna help your resale value. Mm -hmm. If your countertop has got a lip that's gonna prevent moisture infiltration going back behind your sink and your cabinets, that's gonna help with resale value. So when people look at manufactured homes, even these smaller ones, these park models and lower price point homes, they need to be aware of these things that may or may not be available in every home, but certainly Legacy's thinking a little bit ahead of the game on that. Uh, I appreciate that, and I agree. I think a lot of the times when someone's walking through and they buy a home, they don't realize what they didn't get or what's missing, and so then they've got to go get it somewhere else, which that kind of leads a little bit sometimes just to a little bit of dissatisfaction, maybe spending extra money that we can take care of ourselves and do so and deliver that value at a lower cost. 
One thing that I point out too is in, in our tub shower combos, these have built in shelves for them. A lot of times in the old standard, really just a, used to be a kind of a one piece surround that was all flat. There was no texture. There was no, there was no life to it. Um, and then there was no functionality in the form of being able to put your shampoo, uh, soap, anything like that. You had to go buy that or purchase one of the racks that hangs over. You still can if you have a lot, but you don't have to in these. Also, metal fixtures, that porcelain sink, it's got an overflow valve in it. That's standard in every house. That makes it better, and again, it's about delivering that value to the consumer. That actually is amazing because in a home this size, um, you would almost expect for those to be plastic. And, and really, that's one of the things, I'll just swing in here real quick, because I think this is important for people to understand that, that when we get, see, that's not plastic, okay? When, when, when you look at manufactured homes, some of the places where, um, where people cut corners, where manufacturers cut corners, is really on some of the things that most people wouldn't know if they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's our job as, as responsible people in this industry is to point out things to people where, hey, you may be saving money on this sink over here, but in the long run, you're going to want something that's more durable, that's going to last. You know, depends on how long you want to live in the home. Is this something that's going to be temporary for you? Or is this something that's going to be long lasting for your family? And those are just some of the issues that people, they don't know what they don't know, John. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. Uh, one of the great things that we have in this industry is that there's a lot of collaboration and there's a lot of people that are guided more by delivering something that's better to the people that we really have a responsibility to serve. Uh, and, and speaking of the collaboration there, you know, manufacturedhomes.com, the team that does these is an incredible team. Y'all have actually brought in LearnMH, which is a free access to all different types of educational resources. And that's, that's where we all get better. That's us working together, sharing ideas. When we go through houses and we're looking at what other people are doing, we're actually trying to figure out if there's a way that we can improve and fill our philosophy of delivering good value and durability to that end consumer to protect it. That's, that's what makes us all better. Taller, wider, better. Taller, wider, <laughs> better, that's right. So if we go down, we can look at the last bedroom. We still got our thermostat here. Ceiling fans, and this what we're in is actually pretty much the standard, standard features on what we do for, for a lot of our clients. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with these. Even on our, all of our front doors, this, this is a solid steel door. A lot of times people have used, been able to use fiberglass or something like that, but this thing, solid still. There's nothing coming through that. There's also a porch light that comes standard out there. Now in this, in this bedroom, it's a little bit unique. One of the features that we've done is you, you actually could do an optional closet wall and door here. That's a, a more traditional look than a lot of people are used to. But again, we're working, we're working in a home that's the person who's using it is probably aiming to get a little bit less square footage, maybe downsize. We're trying to fit it in a certain certain type of space. So in order to get the maximum utility out of all the square footage in this room, we didn't put a closet wall and door in here because it's an outswing and it actually cuts into some of the useful square footage of it. As you can see here, we've got a we've got a twin size bed. We've still got our space for for a little bit of a nightstand. We've got our dresser, we've got the space, and nothing's covering up the window. You know, John, one of the things that we see sort of emerging as the market changes, and, and I use the term millennial, I almost hate to do that because it almost has a negative connotation, but the fact of the matter is this, we have one of the largest buying generations ever that's coming into home buying now. The, the older millennials are in their, their early to mid 30s now, and with the changes that have happened with the way people are working because of the pandemic and all that, we're seeing a lot of people, younger couples who are buying homes like this, they're using the bedroom, the master bedroom, and then this becomes someone's home office because mm -hmm. telecommuting is such a big thing now because people look at it and go, oh, well, you know, that's the small bedroom. The small bedroom can make a great office. Absolutely. We've seen that quite a bit in some of the 12s and 16 lights. Uh, we have some that actually have a designated area, but in these, where, where again, it's a 2-2, you can get this home actually even in 100 amp. You can go up to 200. But if you're if you're going to, you know, maybe a little bit more of a rural area as well, you're trying to, you know, maybe break away from the city, you know, you can get 100 amp power, run this house, and get a lot of utility out of it. Um, so I think that I think that our net is getting wider 
um, the potential for buyers and what they're looking for. And like you mentioned, the way the demographics are changing, these models are serving a lot more than what they traditionally did maybe 10, 20 years ago. Um, having veterans on the opposite end of the house is, is vitally important because again, if you're working from home, it's good to have a little bit of a separation from the place where you sleep and relax and unwind and having somewhere you, where you can be dedicated in your productivity. Also, if you're a senior, but you want to have a, a caretaker or family that comes in, you're still able to have that privacy from, from both sides in this, in this house. That's awesome, John. I really appreciate your time giving us two of these great homes. I mean, even for a small, even for a small single wide, I mean, this thing feels, it feels like home. Well, that's, that's what we aim to do. We build homes for people. Um, and we try to make them, again, as functional, as durable, and as effective as possible for people. So, you know, taller, wider, better, energy efficiency, LED lights, those are all those little things that you got to put in. And once you do that, people get a very good experience on this industry and what's produced in it. My name is Jason Collins. I'm with ManufacturedHomes.com. Look, guys, we want to produce the content that you guys want to see. So like, comment, subscribe. Do me a huge favor. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about these smaller single whites. Let me know what you want to see. Do you like the doubles? Do you like the park models? Do you like those big two-story, triple-wide behemoths? Oh, just tell me what you want to see. We will travel the country to get that for you guys. Jason Collins, we're Chasing Homes with ManufacturedHomes.com, and we'll see you next time.